Yeah, good evening, everyone, and um, welcome to to this um, session. Um, yesterday we treated the um, induction aspect of this program, and uh, today we are starting the uh, the training properly. So today. We are going to start uh, from project management. And uh, after project management, we proceed to business analysis. So analysis. we are starting project management, which is um, give or take, we take us like um, two weeks to cover this project management with the um, assignment and the rest of them within these two weeks we should be able to conclude everything about uh, this project management and then move into business analysis because these two program is structured to last for one month so are we i will pull up our slide so we'll look at um, what is project management to so understand what is project management? Okay, sir. Yeah, what we are going to be looking at uh, is an introduction to project management. Yesterday, we looked at um, just the table of content, table of content of this uh, project management. This is what we just, just um, looked at the table of content to see the course outline. Yeah, but um, today, we are starting and we are going deep into project management, understand project management very well before we start um, looking at other things about project management. Today is the introduction. So looking at the introduction to project management, number one, we are going to look at the definition of project management, number two, the growth of project management. Number three, factors for create, creation of projects. Number three, the importance of project management. And then absence of project management and the characteristics of a good project management. So this is what we intend to cover this night. Then looking at project management definition, we are not going to look at all the definition of project management. We are going to look at the accepted, um, the most acceptable uh, project management definition from the PMI. Uh, if you just type PMI uh, on the Google, you know the importance of PMI in project management. As of today, they are the body governing the uh, project management uh, body of knowledge. And this is where we are basing our references in this um, training. And is, is a global body recognized. If you have any certification from PMI, you are highly recognized as a project manager um, globally. So that's why we are picking PMI to uh, discuss project management. Most of the uh, things we'll be looking at, we're adopting them from PMI. So without wasting time, let's look at what PMI is saying about project management. Project management is the application of knowledge skills, tools, and techniques 
to project activities to meet the project requirement. Project management is accomplished through the appropriate application and integration of the project management processes identified for the project. Project management enables organization to execute project effectively and efficiently. So that is what the uh, PMI um, is saying about project management. And looking at project management, all of us know that project management, um, everything we do in our life, we need to apply uh, project management. Looking at it from a layman point of view, if you are cooking food in your house, that is a big project. You know, anything if you are if you are preparing for work in the morning, there is a bit of project. So you need to organize it to meet up the time, and there is a budget for that. So if you are going to work, you know how much you budgeted for your transport fee and everything. And this is project. If you are preparing your dinner, you must, uh, before you go to market to buy the condiments for the dinner, you need to make an a, a item, you need to make a list. So all these things are project management. And outside um, uh, this, uh, our home and looking at the organization, organization don't play with project management because they have budgets in organization they have budget in everything they do and once um they are running out of uh, they, they, they are they are not meeting the expectation for any budget it means failure and and uh, they don't play with as such things so that's why project management is very very important to every organization now, what we'll be um, uh, looking at mostly in this um, project management is going to be centering more on IT project management. It's going to be more about um, solution deployment and implementation. So that's what we're going to be covering more in this. So, um let us look at the growth of project management how project management has been growing over the time it is expected that employers will need around 57.7 .7 million project management professional by 2027 this is uh, from the Bureau of uh, uh, Labor Statistics. That's this. They predicted this. Uh, project management is one of the fastest growing uh, profession in the in, in the industry these days. Uh, Twelve percent faster than the average for all the occupation. So you can see how project management is growing. We don't have enough professionals in this uh, industry. So, so please put, your, put yourself on mute so that you won't distract um, other people. So we don't have enough professionals. There is constant need, constant demand for qualified project managers. You know, and that's why it's uh, it's very very good if you are if you are if you are entering project management at this point, you are on the right track. Because if you know what you're doing as a project manager, you are going to be the one selecting job. You are not going to be looking for job. So that is um um the project management growth 
is, is, is uh, growing at a very rapid pace. And we are going to look at the factors. Why is the project management growing at this rapid pace? Some of the factors why it's growing is um, technologies. We are in a very uh, fast um, technological economy. Things are moving uh, faster than it used to be when it, it, it comes to technology. For instance, when you look at um, artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence is driving the industries crazy. Every, every, every organization are struggling, struggling to be competitive, to meet the competition. Because if you are not competitive, others will compete you out of the market. Then look at um, blockchain technology. Blockchain just emerged from nowhere and blockchain is now um, taking a lead in, fin in, in uh, financial industry. Nobody knows where blockchain is taking us. Then look at machine learning. Machine learning has been there and it's it, 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 it just driving the market crazy. Look at um, Internet of a thing. Then look at social media. These are the technologies. Now in social media, another uh, metaverse is coming. So many companies are already keen into metaverse. We don't know where this, all these technologies, they are taking us. Before it used to be when a company managed to deploy one on-premise solution, they are, they are, they are every, they, are, they will be very happy. But these days, on-premise technology doesn't make sense any longer. Every company, they are now moving to the cloud. All these things are factors driving, driving this high rate of technology, um, project management in the IT industry. And we can't have enough of professionals to do this. So that's why you are highly welcome to this uh, uh, professional at this point in time. Once you become a proper pro project management um, project manager, it, it will never be a dull moment for you. You will always be having jobs, only if you don't know what you're doing. And it's not so difficult um, to key in. Like uh, most of us here are already professionals, graduates. So it, it's going to be very easy for you to re-engineer and navigate your way into the system. And the good aspect of it is that uh, project management or project managers, they are not industrial based. They can't say that you are, you are based in telecoms or you are in um, uh, retail or logistics or in healthcare, or in uh, financial industry. As a project manager, you are everywhere, just like business analysts. So that is um, uh, the growth and some of the factors. So we're going to look at the factor uh, that is uh, driving project management uh, a bit in detail. So just like I said, um, technology is a very big factor driving uh, project management. You have uncountable technology. The, the, the one I've listed, is, these are the ones you know, the ones that are very common. There are so many technologies coming up. Like uh, some of us are into um, programming language. There are so many technologies coming up from the um, uh, programming language, a lot of them. But the ones we are talking now, these are the ones that is now being pronounced. And the companies have started adopting them. Just like I said, artificial intelligence, block, um, uh, blockchain, um, 
internet of a thing and the rest of them. So these are the technologies driving the industry crazy. Then competitive forces. One of the reasons so many companies are keen in it because of competition. Now so many companies are now using um, uh, using uh, big data and big data is uh, from um, uh, from uh, from machine learning. The, the way big data does or machine learning does, it helps to understand, it gives a high level analytical overview about the customers, about the customer journey. Now, cost, uh, uh, um, companies tend to use artificial intelligence to understand the way the customer, customer interact with their product and then know how to, to plan the activity around the customer's emotion. So if you are not keen in, when, when your competitors understand the markets very well and understand the customers very well, they will serve customers better. So, and if you are not trying to use that technology they are using, you'll be out of the market. So as other people are keen in, you'll be competing to, to key in as well in order to be competitive. You see what Twitter and Facebook, what they are doing. You see what um, Apple and other technology, what they are doing. The competition is so much. Look at the way they've relegated um, uh, Nokia, Nokia product now. Apple have relegated Nokia product because they didn't key in very well at the, at the beginning. So these are what competition is doing. We're looking at uh, political changes. When we have a new set of politicians, there might be a bit of changes which might trigger um, a lot of changes in the industry and company will start trying to readjust. This is how uh, political climate is now driving um, uh, a project. Market demand. Now we can see we have um, um, hybrid cars everywhere. Everybody is going for hybrid car because of um, uh, cloud em uh, emission. So now they are trying to, to, to reduce the emission rates. Now this is a new technology that is just coming in. This is the market demand. Market is now, our society now, we are trying to reduce, uh, um, to um, key into climate changes. These are some of the things. So old technologies are being phased away. And if you don't key into new technologies, no way. So this is what the market is demanding. And in order to remain competitive, you need to key into what the market is demanding. You look at the economic changes. E economy is changing. Um, when every day this market technologies and everything, economy keeps changing. And this driving uh, for, for, for new technology or for new um, projects to respond to the economic changes. Now we're looking at a customer's uh, request or customer's demand. These days, customers tend to understand themselves more than before. Customers understand now that they have the power, unlike before. Um, the, the market will just impose one product on us and everybody will be buying. But these days, customers will, will, will tell you what they want and you produce what they want, not what you want but what the customers want. And customers, they are very crazy with their, with their appetite. People's appetite changes all the time. So this is what driving um, projects. You see all the time, uh, companies are trying to, to gather customers review. 
All these customers review are the way the customers are looking at your product. If customers are not happy with what you are doing, you see the organization running around to meet, what, meet up with what the customer wants. And our want as customer is always changing. We can never stick to one thing. We always want this. As we are using this now, we, are, we want another thing. So we are the king. They're always running around to meet our demand. And this is driving projects. All these things are projects. Stakeholders demand. Stakeholders are always working hard within the organization to meet up with the either customers or with the regulatory or regulators in the, in, the, in the industry. Now you see, when you talk about regulation, um, some of us that are living the, in the Western world, like uh, Europe and the rest of them, you see what the GDPR is doing. So you cannot just um, gather people's data and start using it anyhow. So there is regulation. So now companies are now working hard to meet up with the GDPR. Or, be, or if you don't do that, the, 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 the fine is too much to bear. So these are some of the things that is driving the, um, the, the market crazy, creating avenues for more pro projects. And with the, 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 the project manager just and in the industry, we are at our advantage. All these things happening is to our advantage. It's create, they are creating more opportunities for us. In London, the average salary of a, 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 a contract project manager is 500 pounds per day. This is, is, a, is a very clear known fact. If you, if you doubt it, Google it. You know, which organization, which industries pays 500 pounds a day? They are paying it because they don't see project managers. There's no project managers. Since I came back to Nigeria, this comp there's one company has been chasing me around to, to have an interview with me. I told them I don't have time. I'm traveling, I'm going on vacation. They left me. Now they are coming back again. It'll be stalking me everywhere. And I've been doing, you know, doing guy for them because I know they are, we, we don't have enough uh, professionals. So this, all this demand is to our advantage. So if you understand this very well, you will not be looking for a job. Job will be looking for you. Just they are like now they are, uh, they are, they are pursuing me everywhere. It's not used to be this way, but since I key in and make sure that I, I'm getting it right, now job is pursuing me everywhere. And that's how it's going to be to all of us once we key in very well. Another factor that is driving uh, is a legal requirement. Just like I said, GDPR is a legal requirement. In the, like some of those in, um, um, working in the um, real estate uh, sector, you see what the health and safety, they are not playing with their jobs. You must com comply. You must comply with all the health and safety regulations. They don't, they don't care about the, the amount of money you've invested in your, your projects. So these are the things, legal requirements. It, because you are not meeting the, the, this requirement, you'll be working hard to meet the, this requirement or the other requirements. These are triggering more projects because the requirement is demanding that you, you need to do things the way you are not doing it before. You, you, are, you are going to do things in a new process. Well, this is what these legal requirements are demanding. And doing things in a new process is a new project. That is meaning from as is to and to be. 
So these are some of the things we'll be meeting in, in business analysis. This is how re legal requirements. Then business process improvement. Even the ones you are doing already, there is need for improvement. Now every company, they are now looking at automating most of their work processes using robotic process automation. Like the, the project I handle with um, Telefonica, that is a robotic process automation. And they are even planning to automate uh, some, uh, so many other uh, area of their work processes. And this is why um, Six Sigma has become very, very good in the industry. Because Six Sigma is about process improvement. Every comp company, is, is, they, 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 are, they are always improving their process. They, they are trying to do better. They are trying to make customers happier. They are trying to retain their customers. It's very difficult. Let me tell you, it's very difficult to retain customers. Customers are the most difficult thing to manage. Any little uh, added advantage from their competitor, they are leaving you. They don't care. So that's why um, continuous business improvement uh, is always driving more, more project. Strategic opportunity or business need. So companies always looking at more strategic areas to venture. How to tidy their, their business processes strategically. They are looking at more sustainable uh, business operation. To look at more uh, uh, sustainable business operation is not easy. You need to plan and you need to plan and plan. All these things are um, pro um, projects. Then we're looking at uh, social need. When we are looking at social need, we are looking at uh, providing a lot of uh, um, infrastructures, more especially the public sectors. And these things are projects. So these are the things that is driving projects. I've said something about environment, environmental. A consideration like um, climate change and the rest of them. Now we're in Africa, we're now trying, everybody is now trying to, to, to take advantage of solar system, solar energy. Now they are now, Elon Musk has been on research to make sure that he produces a phone that is using uh, solar energy that is have capacity to do a lot of things. And this is a means to crash Apple products. You can see how this kind of thing, how this competition. And people are now trying to key in. Everybody knowing that they're trying to reduce um, uh, emission or supporting uh, environmental management. So these are things that driving our projects. So all these projects we are seeing is our activities, our demand, our need. We are the people driving these projects. And it's endless. It will continue. We don't know where technologies are taking us. And we're happy it's happening this way because it's creating opportunity. So technology these days have the capacity to create job for everybody. People tell you that there is no job. I don't believe that. There, there is nothing like there is no job. We think there is no new skill set. People don't have the kind of skill set to this market demand. Not that there is no job. There is too much job.
then let's look at the importance of project management. We've seen the factors driving the market, why there is so much project in the market. Let's look at the importance of uh, project management. Effective project management helps individuals, group, and public and private organization to meet business objectives. That is it. When you plan your project very well, then you meet your business objective. Every company have business objective. And if you don't plan it very well, there is no way you can meet your business objective. You just go there and waste your money, waste your resources. Because the market is highly competitive. And the, te the technology involved is very, very advanced. So you must have to thoroughly plan your objectives. And the only way to do that is project management. Then secondly, satisfying stakeholders' expectation. You know, stakeholders in the companies, they can be very difficult set of people, which we are going to meet very soon. It's not easy to manage stakeholders. If you are taking, if you are having a strategic position in a company and you are handling any, any, any kind of project or anything, you must be able to, to, to know how to manage the project in order to, to meet stakeholders' expectations. The expectations are very high. But if you plan your project very well, there is avenue for stakeholders management, stakeholders analysis. So you need to do proper stakeholders management, do stake, proper stakeholders analysis. And then you, you find out that your project will be very successful. So that's why it's important to apply effective project management. Then another importance is that you, project management to help you to be more uh, predictable. You should be able to predict what you want, be able to say that within this period of time, I should be able to finish this project based on my plan. Within this period of time, or uh, I should be able to finish this project with this amount of budget based on my plan. Because after your budget allocation and the uh, uh, management of timeline, you should be able to predict that this project should be able to, to uh, should be able to finish this project within four months. This is how you can predict your project because you are planning for it very well. But if you don't plan for your project, you cannot come here and tell me that um, uh, your project will last for six months. How do you know that your project is going to last for six months? What is the yardstick to measure how long your project is going to be? Because you don't have any, any plan to back it up. But when you have a project management plan, good project management plan, when you go to, to executive meeting, you are telling them that this project will, will last for, for, for six months, you should be able to demonstrate um, why it's going to last for six months based on your analysis, which you plan. That's the importance of good project management. A good project management should um, help you to deliver the right product at the right time. You've planned for it. You've done all the analysis. You've done while the project is going on, you are tracking the project. So this will help you to deliver the right uh, quality, the right product at the right time because you are working, working with the right uh, uh, professionals. You are working with the right business analysts, developers. And because of that, you should be able to deliver the right product and you should be able to deliver it on time. 
a good project management should be able to help you to resolve problems and issues. How do you do that? You do that through proper risk analysis, which is a, a, an integral part of project management. Project is all about risk. And a good project manager should be a very good uh, risk analyst. There is a way we document risk in project. Now, when you manage the risk very well in project, there is no way um, you won't be able to manage, to, to control the risk or even transfer the risk. We have a um, RAID, RAID analysis. Can you, we, use, we use RAID law to document our risk, our issues, our dependencies in projects, our assumptions. And this is how, after managing it using RAID, you should be able to see all the risk in project and you should be able to, to see how we are managing it. So using all these um, project management techniques will help you to resolve any kind of risk. And these are the importance of applying all these good project management uh, methodologies. You should be able to um, respond to risk in a timely manner, which is just our, our, what I've just discussed within the uh, problem and issue. Risk is being proactive about a hazard or a uh, a bad situation in project. Risk is, is something that is about to happen. It's not an issue yet. And you should be able to, to cash in with your a good project management technique to stop it from happening. Or even if you can't stop it from happening, you should be able to transfer the risk to the appropriate person that can help you manage the risk. So you become proactive when it comes to risk management, because risk is the only thing that can um, destroy your project or make you not to succeed in your project. As a good project manager, you should be able to opti optimize the use of organiz organiz organizational resources. You have a limited amount of resources assigned to you in every project. And you should be able to allocate those resources very well. There are so many tools you can use to do that, like Microsoft um, uh, Project, uh, Project Labor. These are some of these tools that will help you with the Gantt charts and the rest of them. You should be able. To, to be able to allocate your, your resources very well and baseline your resources. So when you are deviating from your baseline, you know. So these are how you, you manage projects, um, uh, manage organizational resources very well. Another one, which is another good important is uh, you identify, recover, or terminate, terminate uh, a failing project. In project management, a good project manager, you are tracking your project. You're always tracking your projects using so many project trackers. So if your projects, is sliding into, if you are going into um, um, scope creep, scope creep is mean when you are deviating from the scope of your project and you have, uh, you are a good project planner using all the project management tools. You should be able to know that you are going in, into scope creep because all the indicators will be flagging off. You should be seeing red dangers everywhere. And this will help you to recover the project. Or if the project, you find out that the project 
uh, is, uh, is going down or the project is becoming obsolete, maybe the market is changing drastically, if you are a good project manager, you should be able to see that and you should be able to terminate that project to control the amount of risk, the amount of loss the organization will face. So these are the things uh, a good project manager, a good project manager is an asset to the company because he knows a lot. As, as a good project manager, you should be able to manage all the project constraints like project scope, quality, shadow, cost, and resource. You should be able to know how to manage, you know the project scope because from the beginning, beginning of the project, you must have a comprehensive project charter. A, a project charter defines everything about the project and gives you the, the, the scope of the project, identify the timeline of the project, identify the cost, identify the possible risk, dependencies, this is the what um, is it, that's why it's very important to have a project charter before you start any project. So if you have all these, then you should be able to manage your project very well. But if, if you are, if you are not managing your project very well, and you are not using all these resources, all these techniques, then you are taking a, a big risk for your organization. No, no good organization will even allow you to, to, to manage their project or come close to the organization without all these uh, methodologies. As a good project manager, or the importance of a project which you are looking at, you should be able to balance the influence of constraints on the project. which we've just uh, mentioned, and manage changes in a better way. In projects, we have um, um, so our society is changing, and so is our project uh, changes our time. So when we're having changes in projects, some of the time is not entirely wrong that uh, there is changes in projects. That's why the agile methodology comes in place. Because agile methodology will help you to be flexible about your project. When there is a bit of changes, then you should be able to manage it very well using your change management analysis or techniques or change requests. So all these things are be measured at the things we are going to deal in details in this uh, project uh, management. Most of these techniques and these tools I've been mentioning, which uh, makes it um, uh, a project management to become very, very important. It, it is important because of all this application, all these uh, techniques, all these methodologies we are using because we are not managing it like a cowboy. We are managing it like professionals. And if we are managing a project like professionals, we must follow all these due processes, applying all these techniques, applying all these methodologies. We are going to look at all these things in details and we are going to use them, not just discuss them. We are going to use them. We are going to implement them. We are going to, Keep our uh, uh, our hand dirty in this uh, in this um, in this program. You know how to create project charter. Not just that you have project charter, you create it. You know how it works. You apply it. Uh, RAID management. You should be able to manage project using RAID. Risk analysis. You should be able to create uh, a good project plan project breakdown structures. We should be able to do all these things. And these are some of the things we are going to meet. So let's look at 
what we face if we are not um, applying the best practice in project management. And this is the absence of project management. Poorly managed proje uh, projects or absence of project management may result in the following. You miss your deadline. That is obvious because you don't even have a plan. You don't even know when the, the uh, you didn't even plan well when you are, you, you, your project will start and when your project will end. So why wouldn't you miss your deadlines? Cost overrun. You don't have a comprehensive budget and you don't have any plan to manage your budget. You can't track your budget. You can't allocate your budget very well. So why won't you have a cost overrun? The project will be of poor quality. When you, are, you don't have a um, budget, you don't know how to, um, to do the proper risk analysis. Why won't your project be of poor, poor quality? It will lead you to rework because you didn't plan well. When you finish your project, the management won't be happy with you. And they will result you going to rework what you've done. And that is wasting resources for the organization. They will not take it from you. They will just sack you. Then uncontrolled expansion of the project. All this... Um, Scope, when you manage your project scope very well, you'll be able to see when you are moving out of your scope. And when you want to, it's just like when driving a car. As a good driver, you, you, you are assigned a lane we are driving on. There are so many, the, the, the road might be so wide, but the road is not for you alone. So you know your lane. If you don't follow your lane, you are lane, you crash on another car or another vehicle. So as a good project manager, you must be able to be focused. When you want to, to, to move out of your lane, you come back because that is how the project is. You have a project scope. Once you want to go out of scope, you look at your scope, you know you are going out of scope, you come back. But if you don't have a scope and you are driving a road in a road where there is no lane you'll be just driving from one corner to the other and that's a very very dangerous yeah before you know it in project management your scope will become so wide you might be even go, doing what you are not supposed to do and that is wasting resources companies are not happy about such project managers and when you are doing these things, you lost a reputation for the organization. Because an organiza organization, org organization don't work alone. You work with other organizations in the industry. And when you don't have proper management, you are, your company doesn't have procedure, the, your company doesn't have good project managers, they are not trained. No company will want to do business with you because you are going to drag them into doom. So everybody will try to avoid you. And this is a very bad reputation for the organization. There is no way you can satisfy stakeholders if you do not plan your project very well. You are going to have a tough time with stakeholders. If you plan project very well, the first thing you do is to do your stakeholder analysis. If you do your stakeholder analysis, then you know what the stakeholders want. You know how to communicate with them. You know when to communicate with them. You know when to meet with them. You know how to be transparent with them. You know the kind of um, the kind of documents they want to see, and they will be very happy with you. Now, if now, if you are going for interview, if uh, the interviewers uh, the, within the first three questions they will ask you is how do you manage your stakeholders as a project manager? If you are going for project management, they must ask you how do you manage difficult stakeholders? How do you manage your stakeholders? 
is very, very important because it's very difficult to satisfy stakeholders. But if you know what you're doing, it's not going to be difficult to manage them because you do proper analysis. So we are going to do proper stakeholder analysis. We're going to use all the templates we have to teach you how to, to manage stakeholders very well by doing a thorough stakeholder analysis. Failure in achieving the objective for which the project was undertaken. Yes, if you don't manage the project very well, you must fail. There is no two ways about it. You can't go, even prayer house cannot save you because you, you are not doing what you are supposed to do. But when you manage your project very well, you get good results. So that's why it's very, very important to um, have a good uh, project uh, management methodologies, tools in place. Let's look at the features or characteristics of a good um, project management. One good feature is that a project must have a beginning and it must have an end. That's number one thing you need to do when you are planning your project. And in project charter, there is a provision for that. You must state when is this project starting and this is when is this project is coming to an end. You must have a definite duration for this project. If you are not doing that, you are not you are you sure you've not started any project. If you, you might know, okay, this project is starting this month. And this is yes, you know when it started, but you must know when the project is ending. Even if the project goes beyond that date, it can be approved for you based on circumstances. They will look at the circumstances which might not be um, your fault. The management might extend the time, but it will be on record that you've um, you missed your timeline. So you must know when your project is starting and when your project is ending. That is number one. A project is temporary in nature. Yes, there can never be a permanent project, never. Every project is of a duration and we just close the project. Stakeholder management is an essential part of project management. We have been saying that. As a good project manager, you must know how to manage stakeholders. These are very difficult sort of people. And the, 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 the more you learn how to and understand that, you must learn how to manage your stakeholders. Then that's when you are beginning to become a good project manager. A project must have a well-defined and structured plan. Yes, even in that the agile methodology that uh, uh, the agile methodology is not telling you that you mustn't plan your, your project. Uh, it's just that it's a bit flexible, but you have to plan your project. But in waterfall is highly structured. That's what you are telling that the other one is highly structured. It's highly structured to a fault. That's why people are leaving waterfall to agile methodology. But your project must be highly structured and defined. You must define your project. You must have a comprehensive project plan breaking down every activity you need to do and you need to achieve in that project. Defining anything you must do there. You must have a good plan. And the project plan must be validated by your line manager. Project, a good project involves a team of people with essential skills. A good project have um, is um, we have project team and project team comprises of different uh, professionals, 
cross-functional, we call it cross-functional team. We have developers, we have project manager, we have a business analyst, we have a, um, a lot, we have tester. You have a lot of people in that project. So there you have this is a team and there's a good project manager, you must be able to, to work well in a team. Not only you need to work well in a team, you need to manage because you are the one managing the team. And that's why as a good project manager, from the beginning, you must be able to identify your team members and validate your skill sets, understand them very well. And to do that, we use racing metrics. We use RACI metrics. RACI is a responsible, accountable, um, consulted, and informed. So in a, in a team, you, know, you must know who is responsible of every task. You must know who is accountable. You must know who, is a, who should be consulted. And you must know whom to inform. These are the, the, the best techniques of you know, managing team in project management. RACI and stakeholder analysis. This will help you to manage the project team very well. All these people involved in the, in the project with diverse and essential skills. You must know how to manage them very well so that there will be no contradiction, there will be no conflicting interests, if you, if you are not a good project manager, then you'll find out that um, your developers and your business analysts will be fighting all the time. You find out that the project manager and the business analyst will be fighting all the time because they don't know their boundaries. A project is unique in nature. Every project is not the same no matter how related they are, they are unique and you should manage them uniquely. Even if you are applying a similar or the same methodology, bear in mind that these are different projects they, because they, they don't have, they, 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 there's no way they can have different uh, uh, time period or duration. Even if they're having the same time period or duration, they might have different people working in different projects. Even if you are developing two, two similar websites at the same time, you might find out that it's not the developers de developing project A that, that are the developers developing project B. Because of, of there is different developers with different uh, personalities, it makes that project unique. They are no longer the same. So you must understand that and try to manage them uniquely. So um, that is um, what we have uh, uh, for today in terms of um, introduction to project um, management. So at this point, I would love to receive questions from you. Hello, class. Hello, sir. I don't talk a lot. I like to, to know that you guys. Hello, sir. Yeah. Hello, hello not, yeah. Yeah, I like to know that you guys are flowing me. So I want to be um I want to hear from you guys. My class is um, is an is an interactive class where I like to interact with you guys. But if you are good with my presentation, that's good. I love that. And uh, thank God we have um, okay. We have um, Donald. Yes, Donald. Um, you can have the floor. Uh, good evening, son. Good evening to um, my colleagues on the 
in the yeah. class. Good evening. Um, good evening. Please, uh, you made mention, um, I, I want to apologize, I joined a bit late. I oh. came in a bit late. It's okay. Um, you mentioned something about project charter. Yeah. You said that um, for a project can actually um, be started, there must be a project charter. So I, I would like to understand what is a project charter? Thank you. A project charter is a one-page document that summarizes everything that needs to be done in that project. And it must be approved before a project can be started. Though some people don't do that, but these are cowboy project managers. Because the project charter gives you the authority to spend money if you are if you are if you are executing a project without a, a, a project charter, if anything goes wrong, and maybe you are being dragged to court, you are going to prison because nobody authorizes you to spend money, more especially if you are spending public fund. So, project charter defines everything. It defines the scope. It defines the problem you are solving. It defines the, the methodology you are trying to use to solve that problem. It, it summarizes everything about that project in one document, in one page. It's a one page document, which is like the authority in that project. So it is an authority in project. So that is project charter. We are going to have a, a, a good look of project charter, but not now. But project charter is very, very important. It, 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 it shows you who, who authorizes these projects. If you, if you are in a, this, these are the things I do. Any project I'm starting either as a project manager or as a business analyst. Even if I'm not uh, in that company, even if I'm a, a contract, as a project manager, business analyst. Once I come in, the first thing I will demand is for the project charter. If they don't have project charter, I will demand that we create a project charter and get it validated before we start the project. Because I will not love a situation of uh, a situation whereby I'll find myself in prison because I'm working for any organization. So you must have to cover your own ass. And project charter is a very good document to do that. Another time is when you are facing difficult stakeholders. When you start a project, over the time, and those people that are facing this kind of troubles mainly are business analysts. You find a stakeholder will come and say, add this, add that. But if you don't have a project charter, you might not even know the scope of what you are doing. You don't know your scope of work. So when a project, uh, when a, 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 a high level, a high ranking stakeholder comes here, add this. If you don't know what you are doing, you add it and you are killing yourself. I'll give you an illustration. When I was working with um, Telefonica, handling these projects, I was meant to, capture the uh, employee data. And uh, when I was cap capturing this employee data, it was said that this project is going to last for four months for me to capture this employee data and do my job. But along the line, a stakeholder came up to me and said that uh, I have to start capturing uh, contractors' data and vendors' data. These are two different projects. For me to capture vendors' data and contractors' data, this will take another six months. But thank God that I know what I'm doing and uh, I, I know the scope of my work. And I told the, 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 the stakeholder, I know that according to project charter, I'm, I'm supposed to capture employee data within four months. If I should start capturing contractors data, it's going to take me another four months or five months to do that. And nothing will stop me from going into scope creep. And I'm not going to do that. But if you want me to do it, 
you document it using change management or change request form. And then I will analyze it with my project team before I do that. And after analysis, I will set the impact of what you are telling me to do. Everybody will see it. But if the, if the management authorizes it, I will do it. But the, the truth is that I've documented what I'm doing. That I will prefer if this your request will be documented and handled as a different project. It's the project charter that helped me to do that. If I did not have project charter, there is no way I could have found those such a situation because maybe I, I don't even know my scope. So that's the, that's what the project charter can do for you. So we are going to look into into details uh, in details in project um, what the, the the project charter the the how project charter looks and the rest of them. We have provision for all these things. We are going to discuss them in details. So I hope I have um, I, um, added a bit of light to what you wanted to know. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, thank you. More questions? Okay. Um, if you don't have more questions, I think um, we will end today's session. And uh, as usual, it's going to be uploaded in the course portal so that you can go there and um, refresh your memories uh, whenever you want. So, and um, our class will continue. I intend to um, do it like um, three times in a week. If you have time, we can do more hours over the weekend. Because um, that's why I do my thing. Most of my students are working class. So I don't want to come in a class and spend another four hours. After somebody have gone to work, you come back and then you spend another four hours. So many of them might not even like it and they won't deflate. The, the, the class will not be interactive. So all I know is that within two weeks, we'll be able to crash this and then move into um, business analysis. So thank you for um, your participation and see you in the next class. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah.